Allergy to metal implants has become an increasingly popular uh, presentation for dermatologists to evaluate. Uh, some patients are requesting it being done prior to their implants, um, and some of the surgeons, primarily orthopedic surgeons, prior to hip or knee replacements are requesting it. Um, it's challenging because the patch test is done on the back, on the skin, and doesn't recreate the environment of the joint, whether that be the knee or the hip, um, you know, other metal implants in other parts of the body as well. Uh, so it doesn't recreate that environment. And it's only a snapshot in time. So it tells us what patients are allergic to today. It does not predict what they might be allergic to at a future point in time if the patch testing is done prior to the joint. A replacement, nor does it prove causation. So just because a patient tests positive to a component of the joint does not mean that the problems the patient may be experiencing are indeed related or caused by the nickel allergy or the allergy to whatever other metal they may have tested positive to. So um, those, are the, those are the main challenges, not uh, recreating the joint space um, and not uh, and only providing a snapshot in time. So setting expectations to the patient is very important. I think the most important way to overcome the challenges that we've discussed is to set the expectations with both the surgeon and the patient, um, letting them know that this is not... Um, uh, the Holy Grail. It doesn't determine what path needs to be taken. Um, certainly, if the patch testing is done before an implant, uh, providing the surgeon with the information of what they may or may not be allergic to um, can help them choose the implant uh, more appropriately, hopefully avoiding anything that they're allergic to. Um, if it's done after the patient's had a problem and we have allergens that they may have reacted to, it's a little less clear because uh, obviously removing a joint is a large procedure. Um, and again, the causation piece is not concrete just because they tested positive. You don't know if it's because um, if the problem they're having is because of an allergy that pre-existed that they were unaware of, or if the release of the metal in the body um, in that joint space caused an allergic reaction um, after the fact. Uh, so, you know, knowing exactly what to do with that information post uh, knee uh, implant or hip implant or whatever metal implant is a little less clear. Um, and really, you just have to provide that information to the surgeon. And as long as everyone is aware up front um, and, and has the appropriate expectations, some of those challenges can be um, taken care of up front. Typically, patients don't come to us um, asking if they're allergic to the metal implant. Um, uh, they're usually sent uh, from their surgeon. Uh, the most clear cut, however, is the static devices, though. So if there are screws or plates in place uh, and the patient gets a dermatitis immediately over top of those screws or plates and then test positive, it's a little more clear cut. Uh, and the studies have shown that if they're positive to that and the dermatitis is immediately uh, on top of whatever the metal is, um, removing that often results in a problem. Uh, we're not typically seeing a diffuse rash, although that certainly can happen um, in these settings. Uh, more often, uh, patients are either coming beforehand asking about whether or not they're allergic to metals in anticipation of a joint, um, or they come afterwards. And, and often it's pain or joint loosening um, that they're coming as a result of but occasionally rash. So um, patients are usually coming asking the question uh, rather than us um, specifically looking for metal implant allergy in a patient presenting um, to our clinic. Patients come for two reasons. They either come before implants um, to try and determine if they're allergic to anything. And again, that's just a snapshot in time. So it doesn't predict what they may become allergic to. It only tells the surgeon and the patient what they're allergic to today. Um, or they come afterwards when they've had a problem and then you test them to see uh, what they might be allergic to. Um, and again, that information goes back to the surgeon and um, 
if uh, there's other processes have been ruled out, there's no infection, there's no uh, malalignment, um, and there's no other uh, reason for whatever problem they're having, and they have tested positive to a, a metal that is a component of their joint, then the surgeon and the patient have to decide, you know, if it's worth it to go through the process of removing that joint and replacing it with something else. Really what uh, the dermatologist's role is, in my opinion, in these situations is to gather information and provide it to the patient and the surgeon, both preoperatively as to what they might, um, what, what they're currently reacting to and, and how that might affect the um, choice of a, an implant. And then postoperatively, if they're having problems, again, providing them with the information of what they're currently allergic to and letting the surgeon and the patient decide, um, you know, what the next steps would be. So I think it's a very complex and complicated process um, because the information is, again, a snapshot. Um, and uh, I think the most important thing is to make sure that expectations are set ahead of time um, with both the patient and the surgeon. Um, if patients give a history of metal allergy, it's appropriate to patch test them prior to implant. Um, you know, and, and there, patients can also be allergic to things other than just the metals. There are acrylates and glues that are used in the joint space. Um, there are some antibiotics that you are used to irrigate the joint space. And so, you know, thinking about the other components as well is important. Uh, but I think the most important thing is setting expectations um, and, and addressing the, the limitations that patch testing has, because again, we're not recreating the joint space. 